today with Elizabeth Kostova, the uh, New York Times bestselling author of The Historian. And thank you for taking time today at Book Expo America 2009 and this exciting day. Thank you for having me. And what people can't see right now is we have a huge banner behind us that is displaying The Swan Thieves, which is your second novel coming out in January. How excited are you about that? I'm very excited. For one thing, it's it's always wonderful to see a book finished. I mean, when you're when you work on a book, you have such an idea of what you want it to be in the end, mm -hmm. and it's great to be at that point finally after about five years. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Now, can you give us a little bit of background on the Swan Thieves? Yes, I started it right after I finished the Historian. Actually, mm -hmm. I really wanted to write a book about a painter and painting for a long time. I love art history, and mm -hmm. I thought it. In some ways, it's been a great excuse to look at a lot of wonderful paintings yes. I wanted to look at again. So The Swan Thieves is a story that came out of a love of painting and a love of museums and going to museums. And it's the story of a genius painter in Washington, D.C. in 1999. It has a partly contemporary oh, setting. Excellent. And this painter is arrested for attempting to stab a painting in the National Gallery a 19th century painting, a very special painting. Mm -hmm. And I won't give away too much about that, <laughs> that painting, but it is very important to the book. And the story is also the tale of how his psychiatrist tries to figure out who he is mm -hmm. and why he did this very strange thing. And it's a story that takes the psychiatrist into the life of this man, and past the borders of his own life and into the lives of the people who have been close to this artist, mm -hmm. especially the women who have been close to him. It's in many ways a story of three women and their lives. Yes. And um, I had a wonderful time researching it yeah. because it's, it's full of paintings and the history of painting. The search that this psychiatrist does brings him into the heart of a mystery in, in 19th century French painting. So it's also a book about the rise of Impressionism in France. Okay. And Impressionism is something we really take for granted now. I know for me, um, I, I didn't look at Impressionist paintings for a long time because I had seen them on too many tote bags and mugs and in too many big retrospective exhibits. But actually when you read about the rise of Impressionism, you realize how radical that movement was. People in France who were not part of that movement were absolutely scandalized by it often. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really provoked, it pro literally provoked riots. And that's hard for us to believe now because it's, it's in many ways tame in the face of what happened in modern art since then. But it's an amazing set of techniques and I wanted to to show some of the uh, the way the Impressionist painters worked, mm -hmm. the world they lived in, the astounding world of late 19th century France. So it's it's a story that takes place in two times and places. And I know that research is, you know, as you just spoke about, is a very um, important part of your writing process. Um, I think what excited everybody about the historian was. You know, when I read a book and I get done with something along those lines and you want to research it more, you know, you want to know a little bit more about that time frame and you capture that so well um, within your books. What is it about historical fiction that really kind of calls to you with regards to historian and all the swamp thieves? Well, for me, research is an addiction. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, I guess it's a better addiction than lots of addictions yes. one could have, but it is an addiction. And it's, um, it's something that I find myself doing more of with every writing project. In fact, when I finished The Historian, for a very brief period, I promised myself I would write a novel that included no historical research. You know, it would take me two <laughs> years. It would be not easy, but it would just yeah. be kind of a normal novel. And we all have enough life experience to write novels, mm -hmm. obviously, everybody. And I immediately found myself writing this book that <laughs> took me into you know, 20 museums and to France mm -hmm. to do research on the coast of Normandy in these incredible coastal settings where people like Monet painted out of doors and, right. and painted literally in the tide sometimes. 
and, and of course the great museums of Paris where you can see so much evidence of this 19th century right. movement. So it was a wonderful excuse to get involved in research again. I also wanted to learn something very different. A lot mm -hmm. of people have asked me if I was going to write a sequel to The Historian or another book um, set in Romania or some part of Eastern Europe. And I really didn't have the desire to do that. I loved writing The Historian, and yeah. I've, been, I've felt very, very honored by readers' responses to it. But I, wanted, I would like to learn something new with every book mm -hmm. for my own satisfaction. Now, did the response to The Historian, you know, it's a debut novel, and Out of the Gate was just amazing. I mean, the success of that book was just phenomenal. Did that change your approach to the second novel in any way? You know, a lot of people have asked me that, and to be honest, in many ways it did not. Okay. Um, I, it's, it's a funny thing. I really didn't, it never occurred to me when I started writing my second book that it could or should be intimidating to write a novel after having had this very, to me, very mm -hmm. unexpected success. I was, I was never um, trying to write a bestseller in any way. I was just trying to write the story that I loved and I had no idea it was even going to sell as a manuscript. Mm -hmm. So that was a big surprise in my life. It never occurred to me that it could be hard to write a second book um, until I, I actually started going to a lot of, read, doing a lot of readings for the historian. And in Q&A sessions, there would always be someone who would stand up and say, you know, um, I'm wondering how it feels to be working on a second book after this first big success. Uh -huh. And do you find that intimidating? Do you feel, you know, four million people waiting for your next book? Do you worry when you sit down to the page that it mm -hmm. won't be what you should be writing? Do you feel pressure? And by the time I had heard 10,000 of those, I did start to think, well, maybe I should be <laughs> worried. Pressure. Yes. <laughs> but to be honest, writing is such a kind of magic circle for mm -hmm. most of us. I think when we step into the the actual process of composition. Mm -hmm. If it's going well, we always forget mm -hmm. everything that's come before and after. I don't, when I'm actually composing and, and trying to be in the, in the mind of a, a woman in Paris in 1878, yeah. I don't remember even what my own name is, let alone that I published a first book. So yeah. there is a kind of protection that the process mm -hmm. of composition gives you. Um, I think that the big change for me was writing for a deadline, because I've always been a very private writer. I've always I wrote the historian for ten years, yes. and without any deadline at all, and and very slowly. So I have had writing for four or five years. I've had the sense of leaving skin marks on my desk. <laughs> that seems very fast to me. Oh, so in the past few years, we've seen a lot of blockbuster books or even ground swelling books move from the book medium over to movies. Is there anything in the works for the historian knowing that you've got these millions of fans that I believe would be very excited if there were something in the works with regards to a movie? Absolutely. Um, the, the historian sold to a studio the year okay. after it was published. It sold to Sony Columbia Pictures studio Red Wagon Pictures. Mm -hmm. And Red Wagon is a wonderful studio. They made Memoirs of a Geisha with Arthur Golden. Excellent. And Girl Interrupted, and mm -hmm. some also some big commercial blockbusters. Mm -hmm. um, and they they have a great ability to work with authors to to transform a book into not always exactly the same story, but into mm -hmm. something quite beautiful visually. And it's a slow process. I think that. Although they've optioned the film, I don't think it will be actually out in theaters um, any sooner than two years yeah. from now. It's a very, it took them seven years to make Memoirs of a Geisha yeah. with Arthur Goldman. So it's, it's a slow process, but I feel yeah. confident that whatever they do is going to be quite beautiful. Well, I can tell you that I will be very excited when it finally comes around to be able to see, you know, the beautiful work that you've written move on to the movie screen. And I know that is, you know, readers abound are very excited for January for the Swan Thieves. So again, I thank you very much for taking time to sit down with us to talk today. Thank you so much.